Guys, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be looking at the Huntress, and I can tell you, I have a couple of really good builds on the Huntress. I hold her in high regards onto where I put her on the leaderboard. I think she's pretty decent and strong in the right hands. Therefore, I put her in the top five best killers in Dead by Daylight, only narrowly squeezing in in the fifth place. Now, there's a few builds that you could do on the Huntress that work really well together. Right now, I'm going to show you the basic, what I refer to as meta build I see on a lot of Huntresses, and then I'm going to show you what I personally would run rather than running what these players run themselves. So currently the most basic Huntress build you're going to be able to see anywhere would have been this. However, recent tweaks have changed a couple of things. Now, originally a Huntress's throwing axe would apply a sloppy butcher effect as well as an M1. As of recent changes, things like pig dashes will no longer apply uh, on hit effects. So that is completely out of the equation. You're going to see a lot of Huntresses running Iron Maiden as their final perk. Now I'm going to tell you why Iron Maiden is a bad choice. So right now, they go for Ruin for Regression, Barbecue and Chili for Situational Awareness, they run Nurses Calling for more information, and if they don't run Iron Maiden, they're normally going to be running Shadowborn or Modern Abuse for a bigger field of view to allow them to hit hatchets easier. This being said, why do I not agree with this? Well, first of all, you're relying on Ruin to stall the game, so you're relying on Luck to a degree to give you pressure throughout the entire board. If you're unaware what Ruin does, it takes 80 seconds to do a generator, ruin, etc, etc. If they don't land a great, they're going to get a 5% penalty. 5% of 80 is 4 seconds, depending on how close the generator is to being finished. If they land a great, they get no productivity bonus. So, ruin isn't a bad perk, don't get me wrong, but I don't like putting all my eggs in one basket when it comes to relying on a regression perk. You're going to get a good amount of situational awareness from barbecue and chili, don't get me wrong, throughout the entire board. People can get in lockers to hide from you. At the same time, if they come out, you're still going to roughly know where they are with Iron Maiden. Nurse's Calling is going to allow you to see people healing in the distance. You can maybe throw a hatchet and curve over a wall and hit them. It it can happen if you're a very, very good Huntress, but at the same time, a lot of maps restrict you from doing these kind of plays. This being said, Iron Maiden is a uh, locker perk, which will allow you to reload your hatchets quicker, search lockers quicker, allowing you to grab somebody out and throw them over your shoulder if they're in there, alongside giving a survivor an exposed status while making them scream. So what is so good about this perk? Realistically, nothing. It gives you equivalent of a uh, a yellow add-on, but I'll get into details about it in a second. Let's look at the second part of the perk. When a survivor jumps out of a locker, they are exposed. Unless they're doing a locker duke, which they probably won't do against a huntress, unless they're doing that, this perk means nothing. You're not going to get across the board quick enough to hit a guy in 15 seconds at 110% uh, movement speed when he, it reveals him for 4 seconds. Now, it doesn't reveal him like Object of Obsession would reveal him or Old School Freddy. It reveals him with a screen bubble staying in place for 4 seconds. And somebody can get in and out of a locker constantly and scream and give you notifications. And it can be really off-putting as well. Now... Like I said, the, this is what I look at when I think of the meta or what people run as Huntress. I see this probably 8 out of 10, 10 games as a Huntress. Now, my build is a little bit different. By a little bit, I mean a hell of a lot different. I have a couple of builds I can recommend for the Huntress. Now, let's just take some facts into mind, alright? The Huntress moves at 110% movement speed. It takes approximately 2, 2.2 seconds to pull up a hatchet and release it as quickly as she can. Her ability allows her to throw a hatchet across the map, injuring a survivor one stage with certain add-ons like the iridescent head, she can injure you two stages, but then she loses a uh, maximum amount of hatchets. There you go. While she pulls the hatchet back, she can charge it. When you hear a ding sound, it's fully charged. Killer and survivor can hear that. Hatchet will fly for further and faster. That being said, the add-ons I was talking about, remember how I showed you Sloppy Butcher in this four spot? Well, there is a green add-on, which is called the, uh, the Rusty Head. The Rusty Head applies what old school Sloppy Butcher would. So realistically, running Sloppy Butcher, you are running three perks and an add-on. So that's what that's going to do. However, the effect lasts 120 seconds and if you had sloppy butcher it would have lasted forever until the person is healed therefore i do not 100 percent recommend the rusty hatchet keep in mind it's only going to work off a throwing axe it's not going to work off an m1 as well but then again you should be hatcheting then m1ing when you're downing a survivor depending on how they're playing um moving back down to there's another one here that allows you to reload quicker moderately decrease the reload time the hatchets that is all iron maiden does for you Yes, it stacks with Iron Maiden, and it doesn't stack, even though it says it does not stack, what it means by it does not stack is it does not stack with other perks, or not, not perks, sorry, other add-ons that do the exact same effect. However, running a perk that does the same effect, I can guarantee it does stack right there, or at least last time I tried, it did stack. I haven't tried it in a little while, and I don't think it has changed, so maybe I can't guarantee it. But anyways, the deer gloves would give you an effect. So you're looking at these two add-ons, which is the equivalent of running Old School Sloppy Butcher and running Iron Maiden. Now, 
up. Remember, I'm an add-onless killer main, so I do not recommend add-ons to anyone, even if you're trying to get better at the game. I recommend sticking it out and practicing and going through the hard yards of understanding moonwalk, hiding your light, twisting your camera to get a hatchet, baiting your light in one direction to throw, throw a preemptive hatchet in the other direction. Now, if we're going to be looking at builds here as what I feel would work really good on a Huntress, okay... The first thing is very, very simple. Now, situational awareness is god tier on the Huntress, right? There are some people I highly recommend certain perks on. Now, if you're unaware of what my five favorite killer perks in the game are in this current stage, in order from favorite to least favorite, it is Pop Goes the Weasel, Discordance, Thrilling Tremor, Infectious Fright, and Surge. Now, you can already tell that three of those perks in there are perks I use very, very commonly. Four, including Surge, depending on if it's an M1 killer with no form of pressure. If Surge worked off the throwing axe, I'd be tempted a little bit, but unfortunately it does not. That being said, in our third or fourth spot here, we're going to go another stall. Now, remember old, the old days when I would make a recommended build, I'd say something to stall, something to give you situational awareness, something to speed up the game in your favor, and something to snowball. That was my old school recommended build. Currently on the Huntress, it's a little bit different. I've got something to stall, something for situational awareness, something for situational awareness and stall, and something for stall. So you'll notice four perks there are all about stopping the game in your favor. It is very fast for people to do generators, and I want to slow that down as quickly as possible due to the fact that I have 110% movement speed. This is going to give me good situational awareness. It's going to allow me to know where two people are. A lot of uh, Huntresses, I forgot to mention, run Whispers. And they're looking for survivors. They're wasting a lot of time. I'm not a kind of guy that likes wasting time when it comes to hunting down survivors. I'm all about productivity and efficiency and knowing where I'm going to be able to rotate to at least see somebody. This is going to give you the information of there's guaranteed two survivors or more in this area. As opposed to whispers is there's somebody around you in 32 meters. Could be the guy in the uh, locker. Could be the guy on the hook. You could be on the game and now the perk's completely useless. No matter what map you're on, Discordance is still bulletproof. You're on the game. You can see him underneath you. You can see him in the far left hand corner. He could be in the basement, Jenny. You can come around the corner, charge up a hatchet outside of your lullaby and wait for them to come running out and then M1 him with the hatchet. Or you can try and get close and get a double hatchet, possibly a triple, depending on how many people are in the basement. So Discordance gives you an unholy amount of information. The fact that this killer is 110% movement speed, I can highly recommend it. You might be wondering, why do I not recommend Discordance on the hag? She's 110% movement speed. Because her job is to prep the board, okay? Her job is to stall, prep, catch. Huntress can't prep. Her job is to stall, catch, in generally in that order. So Discordance giving the mass amount of situational awareness. Now, Barbecue and Chili was an amazing touch. I'm not going to lie to you. Everyone used to run Barbecue and Chili, get awesome hatchets through the cord, maybe worked 1 in 30, 1 in 40. Now, instead of going for these lucky hits, as I like to refer them, I'm all about saving the time. So instead of running Barbecue and Chili in my third place, you bet your bottom dolly, you already know what I'm going to be running here. I'm going to be running the substitute to Barbecue and Chili, which will be Thrilling Tremor. Now, before I talk about that, another thing to point out infectious fright any survivor that you put into dying state while another survivor is within your terror radius will yell yes if you throw a throwing axe and somebody's in your terror radius it will count if i throw a throwing axe 30 meters and down jeff it's off my heartbeat around me it's not off jeff's heartbeat just keep that in mind. And if you press F1, if you're unfamiliar, you know the Huntress here has a base terror radius of 20 meters, moving at 110% movement speed, and she's fast. So that being said, the 20 meters will come off me, not come off Jeff. 20 meters isn't a long distance, as opposed to a Billy who can down you with a chainsaw, and they get 32 meters information, much like a nurse or a spirit as well. So here, Thrilling Tremor is going to seal Jenny's, which is going to stall the game as well. It's also going to allow me where to go. There's no, oh shit, I'm going to check over here because everybody hid from barbecue and chili and I don't know where they are. Or there's, th what is not going to be provided from this is I'm not going to be able to see people self-care. I'm not going to be able to see people coming in for the save. But that's good. If I don't see you coming in for the save, you're probably going to hook save earlier. If you don't know times with hook saves, 60 seconds to struggle, 60 seconds from struggle to die, 80 seconds to do a generator. This is going to tell me what Jenny's nobody he's on and because I'm 110% movement speed that's really good I'm not going to have to go to the far left hand corner of the map on the purga uh, on the purgatory of the, the temple of purgatory sorry I'm not going to have to go into Michael Myers' house on Hattonfield this is just going to give me information say so, cool you've got to go down the street into the right hand side the generator isn't sealed somebody's down there so coming in with my next regression perk which you guys already know what it is it is going to be my favorite perk in Dead by Daylight in this current patch which is Pop Goes the Weasel. Pop Goes the Weasel is going to give me a solid 25% regression of any generator I kick. Now you're looking at this build and you're going, wow, Goose, that's a very stalling build. You are correct. Remember, all my builds are based off no add-ons in the red ranks, 
versing very good survivors. Now, unfortunately, I haven't been able to get games because lobbies are taking a little bit too long right now, which I completely understand. A lot of people want to play Killer on the dedicated servers. I'm loving it as well, but in a couple of days, that should change. This being said, we've got Ruin to stall the game. We've now got Pop for regression. Thrilling Tremor for the situational awareness if people choose not to stack, allowing me to know where to go through Pop Goes the Weasel if they do stack. So this whole build entwines well together. Ruin's there just to stall. I don't care. Pop Goes the Weasel can get massive value off the score, and it's while Thrilling Tremor is going to allow me to know where all the pesky survivors are running around to. I don't have whispers. I'm not relying on luck on finding people. The only way a survivors can beat you is doing generators. Every single thing on my build right now stops you or gives me information for you doing a generator. Keep in mind, the order you should be looking for is stop gens, kill survivors, and then you win the game. If there are four people left and there are no gens done, the hatch isn't an option. You've probably eaten a couple of pallets, therefore the game is slowly becoming in your favor as well. Keep these things in mind. Running Ruin is relying on luck, but these three perks here can come back hard. Don't get me wrong. It's going to be very hard to beat this kind of build on a Huntress. You could go Surge, but that means you have to M1 down somebody after you hatch it. So you have to get the hatchet, then the M1 down. And if they're really good at uh, running Jungle Gems, you can't twist your light, hide it, throw a throwing axe, and get the effect of Surge so it won't be able to be utilized as efficiently as possible. Now, I have seen a couple of Huntresses running Thanophobia, Dying Light, and Agitation. Okay, they're okay perks, don't get me wrong. People run agitation so they can hurry up, get you to the hook, get the information from barbecue and chili, fill from a locker, and then run across the board. That's why people run agitation. Now, I don't need to run across the board very fast if I have Thrilling Tremor stealing a generator for 16 seconds, do I? I need to run across the board very fast if I know somebody's on Discord. There's multiple people there, and I'm just hooking Jeff. Therefore, three people are accounted for at least and there's one person who could be doing a generator. Even if there's two generators left, I can win the game off knowing that information. I can go for a snowball because he can't do two generators at once. He can only do one, and I'm going to where there's at least two players, which could possibly turn out to be three players, giving me the powerhouse because he's going to dying on hook. Somebody needs to come in for him now. Do you see these kind of different things that I can point out to make the build look very appealing? Now, don't get me wrong. There are some Huntress mains out there that will tell you no, run whispers, run this. In my experience, in my 7,000 hours, this is what I look at that works very very well and very efficiently no matter what you're doing you can be running add-ons like the babushka right here it's going to allow you to wind up a lot faster and release hatchets you've also got the mana grass band alongside the oak haft which is going to allow you to throw between hatchets quicker really good add-ons you got the infantry belt it's going to allow you to charge hatchets more you got the, uh, the iridescent head which is going to down people in one hit the begrimmed which is going to slow down how fast they repair generators and give the man mangled effect for two minutes you hit somebody with a throwing axe that aura is revealed to you for five seconds there's a lot of really cute things how However, there is something I haven't mentioned right now that I think is very important for you guys to know. So if you don't know what Hinder does, you might be wondering why you're hindered for 30 seconds and why you're exhausted for 90 seconds. Hinder reduces your movement speed by 5%. The Huntress moves at 110. While you're under the effect of Hindered, you will be moving at 95%. So you're going to be moving at 95% for 30 seconds. You could make a really big mistake at Jungle Gyms and Loops. Do keep in mind... Whether you be slowed or you're not slowed, when you dead hard, you will move at 150% movement speed. You will. If you're under Freddy Krueger's blood on the ground, if you dead hard, you'll move at 150%. Clown's bottle, you'll move at 150%. If you get hit with an M1 and you're running and then you dead hard, you'll notice like no change in distance because you're moving at 150% movement speed. So you can still dead hard towards a pallet to defend yourself from a Huntress. Don't get me wrong. A good Huntress will just walk right through it. Or respect it and throw a hatchet. You see, the thing about that is if you're at a really, really good jungle gym, I'm not going to respect it, pull up a hatchet and try and hit you. No, I'm going to run right through it. I don't care if you pallet stun me. I've just taken out one of the really good jungle gyms and you've got no value out of it. You've just thrown it before you've been able to utilize the window two or three times. For example, a really good survivor will loop the window two or three times, maybe take a hit or try and rotate away and prolong the pallet so then they can come back and do it later. That's what the god tier survivors do. As a killer... Be smart. If you see a survivor waiting for you on a corner before he runs, he obviously wants you to come the direction behind him. Go the opposite way. If you think he's waiting on the corner to see what you do, go the opposite way, wait one second, twist your camera and hide your light, and then flick back around. And he might have came already towards you. There's a couple of plays you could do. Just make sure you're the one leading the chase, not the survivor, because that's going to help you a lot, especially if you overcommit to your chases. If you can't get a hit in 15 seconds or 20 seconds, you've made a mistake and you should be rotating. You should get a pallet, get the hit, get rid of the bloodlust, and then go off there. Do keep in mind and releasing a hatchet gets rid of your bloodlust. So it's very difficult for some people to be a good huntress. At the same time, we all make mistakes when it comes to these kind of plays. Now, moving on to something I do not agree with at all in Dead by Daylight. There is an add-on here which gives you exhaustion effect, and it is a brown add-on. 
I repeat, this gives you blindness. This gives you... Ble uh, you bleed more on the ground so the killer can see. So you could be running Bloodhound to track it. And then, you know, you've got old school Sloppy Butcher or even new school Sloppy Butcher and Bloodhound. All right. This is bullshit, in my personal opinion. Now, why is this bad? It's a brown add-on, so it's cheap, and there's a lot of them. When you throw a throwing axe into a guy's back, you can walk up behind him and M1 him. He's got no counterplay. He can't make a window. He can't dead hard for a pallet. He's just going to go down. That there is very, very powerful, because it just gets rid of the exhaustion. The only counter to this is adrenaline. If you're exhausted, you can still adrenaline. At the same time, Vigil will make it go, go away faster. Don't get me wrong, but you still have to walk for Vigil to become into effect. So, guys, all in all... That's what I'd recommend on the Huntress. With all these things in mind, I put her in the fifth best killer place in the game. She could do a lot of crazy hits on a lot of maps. She has a couple of not so great maps, but if you're running a build like this, you should be able to be comfortable on any map in the game. One more honorable mention I want to chuck out there, if you chose not to run Ruin, would be Cor uh, Corrupt Intervention. Now, I almost didn't say Corrupt Intervention, but because I forgot... It just shows you I don't run it too often on the Huntress. Corrupted Intervention is going to seal the three furthest away Jennies. Remember, you're a slow killer. That being said, if you run it in Wake of Ruin, you've now got discordance for where people are most likely going to group up together because the three separate Jennies are sealed. Smart survivors might take their time, might break a totem, might wander around, search a chest, and make you waste out that perk. But generally, there'll be one or two smart survivors and then a couple of not-so-smart survivors unless they're in a really well-coordinated swift. Another alternative I have seen before is Enduring Spirits Through. Even just enduring and walking through every pallet is not, too, not, not a bad idea just you know until you understand when to bait when not to bait when he can make the corner when he can't make the corner these kind of things knockout knockout's gonna allow you to throwing axe a guy across the board down him 60 meters leave him on the ground rotate elsewhere it's not really a fun play style i don't really recommend it but at the same time sometimes you've got a slug if you're going to be looking for that win at the end of the day i will slug if i have a guy on my shoulder and a guy's running out in front of me to get the hook save behind me i will drop the guy off my shoulder and chase the other guy now three people are in chase and the fourth guy can't be doing generators he needs to come in it's all about understanding how many people are left in the board. I don't look for it, but sometimes it does happen as well. So guys, you've also got Deer Stalker. If you've got a guy on the ground, you can go for a hatchet at him if you think somebody's going to be near him. I'm all ears to help you understand jungle gyms and loops a little bit better. It's not going to be too efficient on a 110% movement speed killer unless you hide your light, pull up a hatchet, twist around a corner, and then throwing axe him right when he comes past the window. Then you can make a play with it as long as he double backed on it. Like I said, there are options, but these aren't really incredible. I've already mentioned what I think of the honorable mentions, guys, and that's going to be all for uh, the video. So guys, if you have any questions about the Huntress, don't hesitate to come to the live stream and check them out. It'd be my pleasure to answer all your questions. So guys, that's why I put Huntress in the fifth, base killer, fifth best killer spot, um, and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.